A lot of a lot of people would give you credit for breaking some boundaries for women, and I would agree. Hey, this is uh, Kim Coletta, and I play in the band Jawbox. Um, I have a side gig running a record label called DeSoto, and right now I'm also playing in a um, project called uh, Paraffin. We've named the project before we really have much music ready. <laughs> and hello, my name is Jeff Gensterbloom from the Indie Drummer Collective, and this is Drummers Talk with Bass Players. Hi, Kim. Hi, Jeff. Good to see you. Um, our first thing we usually launch into is how we know each other, which we, we met through Jawbox and Lepesh. We played some shows together, which is now almost two years ago, right? Or well, yeah. let, me think of, let me think about that. Um, yeah, it was the summer of 2019, right? Yeah. So that's two two years. Yeah. And um, it's funny because, well, first of all, that, that was so much fun. Yeah, that was amazing. That was, you know, that was Jawbox. <laughs> I hadn't played. We, we reunited in 2009 because the Jimmy Fallon show asked us to play, but we only right. we learned a few songs for that. But really, I hadn't I hadn't played bass in ages before that tour. Yeah, um, I'd just been doing other things, and uh, I practiced for a year, every day almost, every day for a year before that tour. Which it was is great. Phenomenal. I remember talking to you how nervous you were before shows. And then so, it was like, but you were on, you had like new moves and stuff on stage. It was awesome. It was so you fun. You think to it watch. was new moves from before, like from when I previously? Yeah, played. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> my body doesn't work as well, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, no, I actually, I actually got fit and practiced bass every day for a year. And actually, that exercise of practicing bass every day was really good for me. Yeah. Not, not just. Well, there were a couple of reasons for it. One is that I really did need to relearn a lot of songs because back in the day we would play, even when we headlined, no more than 40 to 45 minutes. And yeah. truth be told, even my favorite bands in the world, I don't really want to see them play longer than that. But <laughs> on this tour, I don't know if things have changed. We played bigger venues. We were told the set's going to be 90 minutes long. Yeah. And I remember we were we had a band meeting. We were like, "What the fuck? Nine minutes? <laughs> um, so, so double the length of our set." So I, you know, we needed to have many songs relearned under our belts. So there was that. But I also, it became really um, almost zen-like for me because my 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 day job is stressful. So I knew I'd go home and at least for an hour play bass every day, and it kind of became like a ritual, like. I won't say like meditation, that's going too far because it's more active than that, but it was just a- It's a form of it though. Practice. Yeah, just cool to be in that practice again. It, it would transition me into a more relaxed state of mind, you know, yeah. in the moment. So you realize like how important music is for the mind. How did you start playing bass and when did you join like your first band? So I've always loved music and I, I played clarinet growing I up. <laughs> you too? Yeah. Middle school. <laughs> Middle school, same, same. Of course, I'm so old, it was called junior high. When yeah. I, you know, back then. Uh, but, but yeah, and it's funny because even while I was playing clarinet, I, I didn't want to be playing clarinet after a time. I, I, I was seeing friends start to you know, form bands. Yeah. With, and I'm, I was looking at like electric instruments. I'm like, that's what I really want to be doing. Um, so I did quit the clarinet at, yeah. at some point. Um, I didn't, I didn't even do it. I don't think if I did it in high school, it was maybe the very beginning and then I, then I quit, but I'll, I'll tell you this, it's sad, but true. Uh, at the time it was all guys in my town playing. I grew up, um, in Nashua, New Hampshire, which is about 35 miles from Boston. Okay. We would go see shows in Boston. I, at first they were kind of, I was seeing shows like bigger shows like maybe Elvis Costello play with the clash or ultra box and things okay. like that really yeah. cool like early bands like that but then it kind of we started going to hardcore matinee shows at this club called the channel in Boston they were super male dominated super violent yeah and, and even then I knew hardcore wasn't really my thing because I like more melody but it was exciting 
And uh, <laughs> so all my guy friends were playing in, in punk rock bands. It never at that point dawned on me that I could be doing that too. Because there wasn't a single girl in my town doing that kind of thing. Oh. I know it's sad. Um, but times have changed for the better. So that's good. But when yeah. I, went to, I went to college in D.C. And one of the reasons I picked D.C. I never told my parents this till later was because the music scene was so good yeah in, in dc and i knew i wanted to get the hell out of new hampshire as lovely as it is it was boring for me as a 17 year old and and i wanted so i wanted in boston i knew so i wanted to get further away from home so i was like who has a good music scene really great way to pick a college right I mean, awesome. sure. <laughs> I think it's as good as anything. You know, honestly, when you're 17, you don't know your ass yeah. from your elbow. I can so. think of worse reasons. <laughs> exactly. So I came to DC and um, at my college, I, I met, um, I think it was sophomore year in my dorm, I met um, David Grubbs, who was in that seminal uh, Louisville hardcore band called Squirrel Bait. You know, we went on to be in Bastro and Gaster Del Sol and he's still making the most inc incredibly cool and eccentric music. And he uh, he had a bass he was selling. And so I bought my first bass from him. It was a really, really heavy um, Fender P bass. Um, nice. I, I don't own that bass anymore. But uh, so I started teaching myself to play bass sophomore year in college. What's one of your most influential bass players? When I, I, there's been a billion, billion amazing bass players out there, but for me, it was a contemporary of mine. It was um, Rose from the Poster Children. Oh, okay, yeah. Super influential for me. Mm -mm. I saw her play, and there was something about her that was so intense. Like I just really liked the way she put together her bass lines. They just really were so beautifully done and crafted to me. So she was like a contemporary influence. I didn't I didn't grow up going like wow this this dude is a major influence on me. Right. I, I never felt like I don't I can't name someone older than myself. Yeah. Because I just picked up the bass and like the bass players I saw right at the time were more influential on me than yeah. Things that came before. How do you think, is the drummer and bass connection important to you? Like the rhythm sec section connection, how important is that to you? You'd be a jackass if you were on this particular show and you said no to that. I, mean, I wonder if anyone's ever said no. no. I mean, isn't it, isn't it everything, actually? Yeah. yeah. I mean, isn't, it the found, isn't it foundational? I mean, I, I, I think it is. I, w I would think it is. Um, but. I think it's super important. I, I think, and you know, I, I got so lucky. You understand. I, our first drummer, Adam, Amazing. was with us, and then he left for Shutter to the band yeah. Shutter to Think. Yeah. And then, then Zach uh, Barocas came came on board, and I feel like almost just it was such an honor to have Zach. Yeah. He, he's so damn good. That he elevated my bass playing. Yeah, I, yeah. How could it not? I mean, just and people really do enjoy watching him. He's just the way he thinks about rhythm is so phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, it's the way he thinks about everything. Everything. You know, <laughs> you know Zach. Yeah. I know you know him really well, so <laughs> it's it's absolutely right. He thinks that way about novels and poetry yeah. and the store he runs and you know the pe everything about his life is kind of to be such an interesting uh, lens yeah so yeah i think i think that's so important i will say our songwriting when i look back at the way we write, write music um it's there's it has never been one approach yeah in our band so some some of the job box songs started Jay would bring almost a completed song that he'd written on guitar. Um, but many of the songs started with a drum beat or yeah. a bass line. Yeah. And they, they went from that out into a song, um, which I love. Like, I think, like I think for instance, um, Chinese Fork Tie is a good example. Yeah. That was just a bass line at first. 
Oh, I didn't write a bass line to, to a guitar part. I just had this idea in my head and Great. brought it to practice. <laughs> like that one sounds like it was written from a bass line, actually, if you think about it. Yeah, well, after you said that, I was like, okay, yeah. I that makes it. sense, right? <laughs> How the hell would you come up with that bass line on top of it? I don't, yeah. I don't think it would have gone in the other direction <laughs> for some reason. But yeah, I think it's, I think the rhythm section's foundational and um, th there's been a few bands over the years that don't have a bass player. That there's, I don't like that. I don't like that either. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. There's something <laughs> missing when I hear that. Um, I just need that low end is, I don't know if you're in the rock genre at all, which is a very broad category, but yeah. there it is. Without the bass, you know, <laughs> not so much for me. I'm not, a, yeah, I'm not as interested if there's no bass. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I lock into. I need me too. To <laughs> but I think that makes sense because you're a drummer. Yeah. I think sometimes for a lot of people who maybe aren't so musically inclined, it's always like the vocals first that they hear, and then maybe the me guitar melody second. I don't. I don't know. I, I think about this a lot. I think about yeah how I'll, people listen to music and what they yeah, hear. Yeah. Because it's variable, don't you think? Oh, on, sure. For yeah. Sure. What kind? Of, what kind of listener you are? For sure. All right, I'm gonna ask you the last question. Yeah. Um, you mentioned it a little bit at the beginning, but what are you currently working on? So we are going to try to tour Europe um, for the third time as Jawbox because we um, were supposed to go last summer and then pandemic, and then we were supposed to go this June pandemic. Yep. We're trying again for next June. I think third time might be the charm. So. <laughs> We're going to start working on Jawbox stuff again fairly soon. I am in a project uh, called, we named it Paraffin, and I'm playing with a drummer who uh, lives in Belgium, and we're writing music, you know, over over the, virtually, yeah. as you can do these days. And I really like some of the parts we've come up with. We lacked time to form them into songs, so far, but there's a lot of parts going on. But I, it's I'm a teacher, and now it's my summer break. Yeah, so I'm going to hit this more head on. Cool. Yeah, like just th there's no, it's just um, there's no lofty goal for that. I'm just going to see where it takes me. <laughs> I got nothing, but it's just something interesting to do right now. And you you understand, Jeff, because you play in a lot of different things at the same time. Yep. <laughs> so you understand. I don't think I can handle more than two, though. You you can somehow juggle no, three to I, five different I, I bands at once. I try to keep it. I'm tr keeping it lower these days. You are. You, try, you try. scale down. Yeah, try to. Right on. Yeah, so that's what, I, that's what I've been up to. Well, good. Well, Kim, it was fantastic seeing you. Like, so after, nice talking to you. After a long period of time and a crazy year. Um, For sure. I'm glad you're doing well. Thanks. Same to you.